this is the first time I've had the chance to really dig in. So, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is fucking great. Yeah. So, so when it comes to the fan and being a fan of it, what are the things fundamentally that flick your switch? Is it? <laughs> it had to happen. It had to happen. Uh, so uh, things like, is it the b boy personification? Is it the is it the art of selection? Is it the you know the 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 pageantry of hip hop and the the fact that you walk away the fucking, fucking octagon champion <laughs> is it what what are these things that 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 really get you off the drive <laughs> the drive the drive for me has always been for me it's it's take it's 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 being able to flip a track in a way that no one else will think of and you don't have fucking pro tools you don't have ableton or anything you've got the records there and just by moving them around, you you create a whole brand new piece of music. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official .com. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. Talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Very excited. Very excited. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast live and direct for your funky head. Central London, central as you need to be. Could be, want to be. You don't want to be anywhere else. Big shout to all the originators. You know, fucking God knows how many episodes now. 400 or something. I don't know. But we keep on climbing. We're like an elevator. You push the button, goes up to the top. And if you're feeling uh, like you're at the top at the moment, then obviously you've got the television app, free download, iPhone, Android, for your street culture, sports, mini docs, mini docs, uh, full docs, full docs, and of course, the mixes and the no, toys podcast um, big shout out to our sponsors the mighty Hoddle Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys hideout that's some NFT business for you uh, today we have a very special guest somebody that uh, has been part of my journey um, in, in the world of scratch DJing I hold up scratch perverts every time but uh, this gentleman has won some fucking trophies ranging from four times world DJ champion to seven times, seven times DJ champion, not to mention first DJ at the proms. He goes by the name, the notorious, the bully, the king, DJ, Mr. Switch inside yes, the house. Nice. Love the bully. I've got to add that to the list. A bully and a king. Come on, <laughs> yeah. it's the truth. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, cups of tea in the morning. That's how we do. That's yours a tick. Yeah. We didn't actually get them together, you see. I know, I know. And you know, I'm not a coffee drinker. Really? And I feel really weird because whenever I go abroad, <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, you drink tea. So I, be, I feel the classic like British stereotype. It's just, <laughs> it's like, no, I just, I just never got into it. Creeping in. <laughs> As they like to do to us. I mean, there is no mistaking when it comes to DJing. The Brits have absolutely dominated, whether it be DMC's Hold Tight Tony Prince, Sal and all the gang. Um, rest in peace, Nick, of course. Um, but, you know, just having this tenaciousness for grabbing yeah. turntables and manipulating them, it's been a British way almost, hasn't it? Oh, yeah, totally. Like, my first DMC video was 2001, and this is going to age people, but... And that was the year that Plus One won. So mm -hmm. that was that was my intro. So it started with all these DJs, and then you got like Scully, Woody, and you finish on Plus One, and you just like. And I was eleven years old when I watched that, and just like, fuck me, this is good. Wow. Are you allowed to swear? I should ask. This is your yeah, podcast, my brother. Ever. You can sing and dance. You can <laughs> wrist weights <laughs> and, a, and a rubber no. dinghy on if you want. This is totally your <laughs> call. So yeah, man. So so that was my intro to it, and yeah, and then all the DJs who've come before that and after that and just like the amount of innovative amazingness it is yeah. amazingness isn't yeah. it i mean you talk of, i mean listen for those of you uh, are not familiar with the the landscape of turntablism as, as we've called it since the late 90s the, the whole idea of manipulating you know of wax isn't it it's not an uncommon thing but what this of its times shined a light on was almost like a new way of thinking it was an approach that actually it, 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 and it wasn't so much from a technological point place no it was yeah. from a celebrity point place mm. it was like these guys are superstars they're like rock stars on and the way that they're doing it is very uh production driven mm. almost isn't it yeah totally like I'm, I'm I'm going straight into my intros, like and like my origins. Get like, in. Like I always, the the image that stuck in my head was 
Executioners and Linkin Park, and they did that single, It's Going Down. And I always remember the camera panning over, like, I think it's like six or eight turntables. And just like, just the mind blowing. You got Rock Raider doing body tricks with the camera going a 360 over his head. And just like, yeah, just who like. Who doesn't like, who doesn't want to be like that? You know? Yeah. So, like, yeah, when I was going into DJing, it was really like, there was a real focus of like the DJ being front and center in the charts at the time as well. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it, I think that was also at play, wasn't it? The whole yeah. idea of because because then there was that rock rap rapper. There's the whole rap over. rock era, yeah, yeah. which is its own little mini, yeah, yeah. Slip, <laughs> Slipknot and yeah. Limp Biscuit and all that kind of thing, which you know have aged reasonably well considering mm. <laughs> over the years. Uh, but yeah, it became a very uh, quite a contagious thing of of people wanting to like try what what is you know mm. bypass everything go straight to the crab scratch yeah exactly <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> that's the that's the basic model of people wanting to get into turntablism right <laughs> yeah. that that is number one like anyone learning for the first time and teaching yeah just show me the crab mm. show me the crab it's another way it's the same with the graffiti and uh, beatboxing mm. you know they don't want the boots and cats they don't want to know block letters they don't want to you know fuck that go straight to the juggler when, when, I, when actually the real essence of djing it goes back to the early days doesn't it it does yeah well sitting here talking and like i just watched the the full grammys hip-hop 50 show coming in and just saw grandmaster flash he like he got the full boom box out and and i, I went on his instagram page and he got it cleaned and just like made sure it was a hundred percent working on stage he did that he did yeah <sighs> That's so like, it, like they wanted it to be real on stage. It's like, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, yeah. and that's the thing. We love performing it live. We're not, we're not just hit play. We're like, you know, we want to like, uh, just yeah, go in and like do shit live. You know? Okay, so let's get into the tech. As you talked mm. there, you know, and you, you mentioned um, the aforementioned the, the kind of caliber that was coming up swiftly be behind plus one. But then you signaled a new. Uh, a new era of DJ, you know, Angelo, Jay, uh, uh, J, um, yeah, 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 B, yeah, 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 Jeff, Jeff B, B big ups. Um, uh, Tiger Styles. Tiger, he he was kind of he won his titles before me. He was yeah. like one of the guys I was yeah. watching coming up. DJ yeah. Woody, totally, totally Woody. Woody, right? Like he's he, again, he's one big of up guys. Woody by the way. By yeah. the big up everybody that's uh, exactly, that's, exactly. That's, like Woody's pushed it every single video and idea, like. And that's the thing I love, like, yeah, because you, because like the technology, when you got that turntable, you don't have that much to it. Mm. There's not that many buttons, and we have gone in and just been like, right, if you, you, they've really drilled into what the fuck you can get out of mm. those buttons, and you didn't even know that could do that. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have those epiphany moments of like, because you know, to win that many titles, bruv, you actually, mm. there's got to be some. Not only the performance prep, not only the selection, but there's also the there's there's that little bit in the routine which is a bit of ingenuity. Yeah, that's the study, isn't it? That's the what hasn't been done before. Mm. What can be done? That's the drink. Like I think I've only had like one like p particular. No, no, two or three. <laughs> 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 uh, big, big headed. But yeah, yeah, totally. Like in the routine, like. Yeah, there'll be when when I'm putting routines together, it, and it, this changes for everyone. I think you know everyone has their own approach to putting a battle routine together. But for me, like a lot of the routines will start with like yeah that core idea, and then you build the shape around it. So like that's that's what I want to do. That's the the craziness. How do I get to it? How do I put the record on and play to it? What do I do to get to the right tempo or like yeah just like hype it up so I can get to that that winning moment. Yeah. No way. So it's almost like a mind map. It really is. Yeah. And especially like if you got like ninety seconds in mm. the the supremacy, the head to head, the head to head battle format, the real like one on one knockout. So yeah, you've only got like ninety seconds around. So you really have to drill in, and and that will make you go. I don't have I don't have time for that idea. Mm. So if I want that one or that one, I've got to chuck that out and. You really got to like focus it. Yeah. That's quite ruthless, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So what if it was an idea that you'd come up with that kind of shaped the whole thing? Have you ever had that where it's like, oh, I've got to get rid of the, the nucleus of the idea? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I well, so when I when I did the so I did the um, the supremacy three years. As one does, of course. As one does. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. If you're not watching and you're listening, my guy has got the DMC <laughs> world. Showed him the real shit. Showed him the real shit. Come on, son. <laughs> 
I, I, need to, I need to get out more. That's fucking world champion in this piece. <laughs> Multiples. Yeah, carry so, on, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so year three, I had this idea with um, Flux Pavilion got to know. And it was too long. And I was like, shit, I can't use it. And I had I had loads of other ideas, but I was like, there was a whole routine <laughs> that I just didn't use. And then, and like, I think Sally and the crew kept wanting me to do the six minute, which is the main title yeah, yeah. kind of one. Which is the time for, so the different competitions have different timings, you understand people. So six minutes is the DMC one, you, you yeah. routine six minutes. And it's kind of like the DJ championship. Yeah. And then you have like the supremacy, which is like the head to head one. You have the team one, yeah. all these offshoots. And Goldie Awards and ITF and all yeah, this. Back yeah. in day till now. There's so, yeah, there's so many good battles popping off. Um but yeah, so that I that idea kind of sat around and I never used it. And then when I came to thinking of the six minute category, it was like it's got that that was idea number one. That mm. was the only reason I did it, because it had that one kind of winning moment, mm. which I can't kind of explain or like mime. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll beatbox it, you dance it. <laughs> it was like it was it was like a oh it was like an open fader kind of trick, but yeah. Open fader. I would love I would love to go to like a DJ school and properly break down that routine because I was so proud of that. Science behind these Yeah, things. exactly. Do you feel there is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, so it's the train going past. Sorry, right? I don't worry about that. <laughs> They're used to it, aren't you, people? The train yeah. does go past. Yeah. We're right in fucking central London. <laughs> yeah. There is a science. When you feel it. Explain, yeah. explain, the si- explain that science that you, you're talking about there. So, well, so there was a, there was a trick that I, saw, I first saw scully doing 2002 which is like it's like like the open fader idea so if you're doing a beat juggle you're going from you, you start with looping it right so if you're looping like a single phrase yeah and then you open the fader and then you kind of catch more yeah he starts with the juggle and then he'll kind of leave the fader open to catch extra sounds so he starts just looping beats and then he get he lets a snare in by not putting the fader all the way over Whoa. And then and then he keeps doing it, so you add more snares. So he's doing the same thing physically, and just that little change of motion means it opens it up and adds more. So just those little tiny little movements. And I kind of took that and amped it up for the um, the Flux Pavilion routine. Yeah, right. Uh, we have to get more takers on this because you've actually just opened a window of of opportunity here where I actually <laughs> you're explaining it perfectly. Mm. So. I mean, that in an essence is the next level of beat juggle. I think a lot of people out there will, you know, whether they're into DJing or not, would have been exposed to the idea of one record being reversed while the other mm. one's playing and then back and forth, left and right to each other. But what you're saying there is precision incremental moments. Yeah. Like, how many years does it take to get to that point? I mean, that's a study in itself, isn't it? That is That is a really good question. I mean... I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know how to answer how long it would take to get to that. Like whenever anyone, anyone asks me how long does it take to get good as this, mm. I say, well, I've been DJing for like twenty years, so twenty years. Yeah, you can't, perhaps I'm being you quite can't specific. Break down. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like I think a lot of that kind of comes from. I mean, yeah, like like my Flux Pavilion routine came about because I first saw that idea in Scully set. So I think watching other people's routines and like. You know, you can have if you come up with your own idea, or you see an idea that pops your idea off, um, and and yeah, and then in terms of like the actual skill set, it just kind of comes with like bee juggling is its own kind of mind fuck. Like, <laughs> like it. to learn to learn juggling. Like, there's still some routines I I would love to like sit down and try and learn that have never been copied again. Really? Like, yeah. What do you do you? I guess it's like doing a cover song on a guitar. Do you copy other DJs' routines to just see how they did it? I used to. I, I want to get back into it, funnily enough, just really? to be like... Because that, that that really helped me Like when I was starting off, just like getting the same records, copying that routine, working out. There was like an A-track routine that I happened to have the same copies of. And he completely like... He, there was one point where he was just playing the record and that the original is 100 BPM, and he was making it 70 BPM, and he wasn't touching it. And he was just playing with the faders. And it's like, how are you doing that? What? So he was he was sped up, but by just by default of the way he's moving. Yeah. And this, all right, this, the this, faders. this is the real, like, Science 101. So, like, it was, um, I think it was Space Dust. 
and the bit this is my terrible mm-hmm. beatboxing bit. So the actual beat was like ba da ba bam 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 bana chinna bam bam ch bam bam. So that's the beat. Yeah. And then when you isolate like the melody bit, you've so you you got that as a hundred BPM. You 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 kind of play with it, and then you've got bam bam ba dum bam, and that little section that's like hundred and forty beat. So that's your window in to flipping the track to make it one hundred and forty, oh which is a whole. <laughs> wow. I'm making no. I'm going to put all these clips in. Yeah, I've yeah. I've got little notes. But in. the yeah. theory in which you're explaining this, it comes from a, a, a seasoned uh, fan. Totally, I'm a, I'm a fan first and foremost. Like I'm I'm really lucky that I'm able to do this kind of stuff. But first and foremost, I just the whole the whole way that the whole culture is built and the tricks have amped up. Yeah, I'm I'm a fan. Like, so this is great. This is fucking great. I, <laughs> I loved. This is the first time I've had the chance to really dig in. So, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is fucking great. Yeah. So, so when it comes to the fan and being a fan of it, what are the things fundamentally that flick your switch? Is it? <laughs> it had to happen. It had to happen. <laughs> uh, so uh, things like, is it the b boy personification? Is it the? Is it the art of selection? Is it the? You know the 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 pageantry of hip hop and the the fact that you walk away the fucking fucking octagon champion. <laughs> Is it what what are these things that 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 really get you off? The drive, <laughs> the drive, the drive for me has always been, for me it's it's take it's 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 being able to flip a track in a way that no one else will think of, and you don't have fucking pro tools, you don't have Ableton or anything. You've got the records there. And just by moving them around, you you create a whole brand new piece of music. That's always been the kind of number one thing. But you've won a lot of fucking competitions. Do you yeah, think, that as well. Do you feel yeah. like the gods reward people that uh, are naturally curious about the thing they love? Do you think that's what part of it is? Do you think that, you know, work ethic and just, you know, passion and abundance, do you think that's what wins the day? Mostly, yeah, but sometimes sometimes it can also be luck because there's been some people who really fucking deserve a title and have never got one. Like like Crazy B, mm. ha- it took him like mm. ten big plus up, crazy years, B. Yeah, yeah, big yeah. up all day. It took him so long to actually win that title, yeah. and he had the absolute drive to do it. Like, I feel I wonder if like like nowadays there's some people who walk away and be like, I should have got a title, but. Do you think there are? It's, do you think people, are there people out there that you think, oh, it's unjust, they, they really do deserve some, some win? They probably are. I, th- I think most people are rewarded, but I think there are probably some people who are like, I should want. Sh- <laughs> <laughs> Tell me who. Do you know what? Um, who do you I think? think? Who do you think like, you really think deserves some flowers in the, in the realms of they fucking killed that? Well, do you know what? First off, like JFB, because yeah. he's, he's my bro from a long time. Like We first met in 2007. We yeah. both got our UK titles that year and yeah and like he he hard grafted like he 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 wanted a he wanted a world title for a long time and absolutely i was so proud of him when mm. he like yeah 2021 won three titles in one go and but he still wanted to make sure he won like the six minute the big one mm. which he did he completely smashed it mm-hmm. um so yeah he like yeah and he's been battling since 2006 so that's how much time it can take take. to be like and there can be a mixture of you can be unlucky like you can go in and smash a set but there there can be someone else who enters that year and wild card just yeah wild card shit or just like you're just like oh you know like you're just unlucky you've got a really good set but you can't also always predict who else Mm. is going to enter like yeah i mean like when when i won in 2014 i was really like you know, I felt like I had the certainty that I would, but at the same time, there was still like even back, even backstage before they were going to announce, I knew I got it. But you got this whole fucking tension when they're saying like third place, second place, and you just don't want to hear your name until later. And it's just a whole mind fuck. It really is. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I've seen it way too many times with the, with the, the competitions. But but and then the other guy, I'd shout out who I don't think I don't think he's won a world title yet is a guy called Fumi from Japan. Okay. He's fucking crazy. Really? Absolutely crazy. Yeah. Like his he's just he's one of those guys who's just improved and improved. So he's done like the Goldie Awards, he's done DMC, he's done Red Bull. 
And I think in all of them, he's got like, I think he's got runner up in all of them. Really? And it's just like, yeah, and that's just so unlucky. Oh, he's the bridesmaid. I know those ones. Uh, dude, just listening to, to that sentence there of improving, improving, improving. By the way, JFB, big up, because mm. I remember seeing him at a show and, um, you know, just, I'm not trying to give away any of his secrets, you understand? But like, <laughs> I was there watching from afar. Oh. <laughs> Dude, he's he's triggering a lot. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, yo, that is ingenuity. Like, to think that he's basically, he, he'll get what the crowd loves, mm. but has it programmed as opposed to quick find that record or go yeah. on Serato. He's got it all programmed. It's bang, chicka chicka bang. Chicka, chicka. It's fucking, I mean, that is on the money. I think. Yeah. It's fucking great. He's, he's put so much work into his read scenes. And I know, like, Craze and a couple of other people have watched him and gone, it's too much, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put it away, man. Imagine, it's like, oh, you're too much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, like, yeah, I love I love his approach to like, especially doing like turntablism in a club set is a whole different mm. fucking thing. Because you, you want to do stuff that like you know you can do mm. that won't put people off and you can just, yeah. It's a fine fun. line, isn't it? It is a fine line, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, and I'm just thinking of like, Sit, like I've been seeing like old clips of like like the perverts doing like their shit mm. in in clubs as well. So like yeah, there's a whole especially because you can now program stuff that you can make it like easier for you and more enjoyable for mm. um, the crowd as well. Mm. Like you can do you can do a main stage festival set with turntablism. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. When crazy. it's too much though, you, you you mentioned you know people going up a level every time and. You know, Jeff B, when you see what he does. And yourself, as somebody that doesn't DJ and knowing that you're fucking world champion in the building, <laughs> it's, um, it's fucking bonkers. It, when is it too much, though? When do, you feel, when do you feel to yourself, not that I hope you ever were, you know, hope you don't, but, oh, man, another, another world champion. Do I have to go and <laughs> do it again? Do you, know, do you know what? One reason I wouldn't do it again while I've retired, I'd have to change all my shout-outs. Like add a fucking number, and like four's a nice yeah, number. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, like yeah. number four. It's the magic number. Isn't it? <laughs> um, but yeah, like I think some people can be unlucky in it, and it's not. And I think there comes a level where it's not the skill set because you can smash it, work it. Oh, God, I only said that because my mother-in-law says smash it murk it she's trying to get more and more into the lingo of gigs like have fun smash it murk it like, oh, but <laughs> what up man duke <laughs> my switch um but like the skill level can be the same with two people but then it just comes down to more more the kind of the presentation like you know that's when it that's when it boils down to like the musicality of it what you're presenting and so is music is musicality more than tech do you reckon do you reckon there's more because um, I'll give in, you... if it, in a dead heat, musicality will give you the edge, like the the better presented set. What well, then? A, then a then a crowd, you know, uh, showbiz moment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, showbiz moments win. Like like the crowd are happy, the judges are happy. But if it's just like a showboat moment, like I don't think it. Person personally, if it's me, like mm. that doesn't give me. When I tell you what, when I judge, I do like it's like a little fucking um, flat line thing. Mm -hmm. So I do my little scribble, and if I like it, the scribble goes up. Like really? That. Yeah, that's how I judge. I don't write. I'll I'll make some notes, but I'll be like, oh, I like that. Or if it like, or if it's a trick that makes me goes, fuck, I wish I'd thought of that. That's that's the magic. Get the fuck out. Of here. <laughs> so you're basically uh, your your. Uh... What are they called? Heart. Um... Yeah, heart monitor or something. Yeah, yeah. you're like basically. Yeah, I'm a yeah. Hand like monitor. Or you're flatlining. You're flatlining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. Whee! Yeah. That's bonkers. Yeah. Uh, what a great visual representation of someone's show. <laughs> have you ever given it to them afterwards? I mean, this is an art oh, piece. Surely, this is. Yeah. Every DJ should have one. The switch on switchometer. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do that after something. Yeah, yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. Well, as yeah. you can see this, down this by the was bottom his here. graph. Yeah, you yeah. can see here. That was a good bit. Yeah, yeah. that was a good bit. <laughs> There you go. That's it. It's part. I of made it. a note of that I'm going to do that for next time. It's a great yeah. idea. Um, yeah, I feel yeah. like with a lot of these scenarios in the world of DJing, um, it really is about, and I think it comes from a place in a lot of these subgenres that if you're a name, mm. you kind of Q jump a little bit. Yeah, doesn't matter whether it's good selection, showmanship, mm. or techers. Yeah, people just immediately 
go for you. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I can totally see that. Like, yeah. Like, for mm. instance, Scully came back mm. and the, the, the anticipation of his return yeah. Yeah. was immense. It was like, there he is. Do you mean? Like, <laughs> I, I remember that. Yeah, because everyone was like, like when he was going through the heats, everyone was like, what did he drop? Like, yeah. like what, what did he do? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I mean... It, he didn't win no. that year. No, but but it's but, the, but yeah, but there, yeah, no, it goes. It got Q jumps. It, you go the distance. It does. Yeah, Mister Thing, whole... right? Mister Thing, for instance, who yeah. won the worlds. Right, mm. similar sort of case. Would you say? I'm not saying he wasn't fucking amazing. Yeah, but but point being is that, that can... extra gravitas of. Yeah, it can do. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if it wins either top spot. Well, actually, having said that, there's. I won't say. I won't say. I could say who. <laughs> there's say who. <laughs> there's. I love the guy. Fair deals to him. But there's one. There's one DJ who I voted to win the world title. He deserved to win the world title, and I absolutely hated his set, his style. But in all the kind of categories, he kind okay. of smashed everything. Okay, which is tough because. Again, that goes against the moral judgment of the competition. Right? It's it's it's. I was so torn about it, mm. and like, and it's and it, and what I will say is like, his style is certainly in those sets was it was the it was the epitome of like the pre-produced kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's like if you gave them an unedited record, could you do that? And you felt like it was like no. So like a lot of like, it's almost like you know you it it was it was one step away from just hitting play on a CD player really? over in the corner and you can just like do whatever. Play the barman, go and get yeah. beer and... <laughs> yeah, and it's just like... Pour some always... the judges, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> I've always grappled with that, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. But then, of course, you know, you... Not everyone can win. Not everyone can win yeah. in these competitions. Yeah. yeah. Let's go back to... Uh, let's go back to your upbringing. Where are you from, originally? Birmingham. 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 Big up my Birmingham crew. Come on, you know I've had a bunch of Birmingham heads come I know, through. I know, I <laughs> know. You yeah. know it is. Uh, <laughs> um, how old were you when you uh, got yourself your first turntables? Eleven. Eleven? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Old. started young, started young. That's fucking young, bro. Yeah, well, and you know what, like, my first decks were, um, like, oh, absolute pieces of... Because, bless them, my parents were so supportive from day one so like like they were both belt drive and one of them was like the bottom part of a boombox kind of thing so you push it in and the turntable slides out <laughs> it was so i wish i have a picture somewhere but jesus yeah i like all my old mixtapes from that, that first year no speed control mm. so like you're learning how to mix records just by like pushing yeah. it up to speed it or slow it down which is like I kind of recommend it because that's if you if you want to learn how to beat match, mm. it will sound like shit until you're doing it right. Mm-hmm. So that's that's a really nice way to learn. God, yeah. I love that. <laughs> I think I think any cheap to enter culture, mm. it, it, even if you're getting the, you know, you never get the best things first. It'd be yeah. fucking, it's wrong, isn't it? You exactly, know? exactly. You want it to be hard. You want it to be, you know, <laughs> but a notoriously scratch DJ equipment, especially. It's bonkers prices. It is. It is. Was yeah. it like three and a half grand for for a whole setup? Top, top range. Be. Yeah. 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 No, it is. And that's and that's yeah. That is the real shame because like you know, you got your pillars. You got beatboxing, MCing, breaking, and then you got yeah. DJing. Yeah, yeah. Which is <laughs> up there price wise. Yeah, you know. yeah. yeah, yeah. It definitely throws the the, the, the class system of hip hop out. <laughs> it's like oh wait, but you know what? They, but I or you do a Grandmaster Flash and you just like rewire. You get stuff from a skip. And yeah, just yeah, rewire yeah. it all yourself. Cool as fuck though. And I know you hear story like Craze came on a podcast, told the story of here how he got his turntables, and it's just it, it's this desire of by hook or by crook. I, I yeah. want to be a DJ mm. of a seismic skill set yeah 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 Yeah. but you know what but like a lot of a lot of the gear was like you know like you win stuff you get gear as prizes so you like gradually update the gear as you as you go along and um yeah what's the most significant piece of gear that you got that was like oh here comes four wheel drive fucking let's (laughs) drive it like we stole it uh most significant yeah um 
what was I using? So I was using a Rain. What was it? It was a Rain TTM five seven mixer, which yeah, was like a black one, right? Yeah, black. sleek bad boy. Yeah, yeah. it was um, bad boy. That was yeah. And I won. I won that from I think the UK final, and then yeah, that was that was a fun one. Really, that was the that was a wicked mixer. It was yeah. so understated, but fucking smacked it. Didn't yeah, it? it's because I emerged from the US came in and was using it, and that was yeah. the first like oh that, and it just looked completely different from all the others. That yeah, was the yeah. first like. Yeah, I need that. Yeah, prior to that, there was the 05 and the 06 and the Vestax, which would have been quite... You know, um, I never had a Vestax, which I would have liked to, especially with all the kind of crazy tricks you could do with just like the switches they put in. Yeah. Like the reverse switches and stuff. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there was all these yeah. different things. I mean, Google this shit if you don't know. You know, Vestax 05, 06. What was the thin one? What was the thin Vestax? It was 07, wasn't it? Uh, it's was really thin. Oh, yeah, I... Th- 06 or 07, yeah. 05 was Chunky. Chunky Bastard, yeah. Oh, that's a good question. I should know. Yeah, and that's I don't. Right. I feel I, I betrayed my inner, <laughs> my yeah, inner DJ, DJ nerd. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, trust me. I'll be, I'll be getting like multiple WhatsApps later on this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking idiots. With complete and utter explanation of every minute of the of the, of the Vestax being touched. Uh, dude, when you, when you were building your sets, and I say that loosely, you know, did you have an inkling of the kind of level you wanted to reach? Were there people that were influencing you that you mentioned that you copied and replicated certain mm. things? I would imagine that wasn't really in your arsenal by then. Arsenal by then. So, is what was it? Were, were you were you just going one step at a time to try and figure out how to do things? Was it really building blocks once you had the the right gear? Yeah, I mean. The nice thing is that, like, fundamentally, crossfader turntables, I mean, belt drives aside, you need to have direct drive. But mm. once you kind of got that, it's fundamentally the same. Um, so, like, yeah, I mean, in terms of, like, the progression, yeah, there was, there was, the, there was a lot of copycatting starting out. That was, that was really the key for me, like, just figuring out how other people were doing their routines. Because, you know, like, no... Like and I was de- if if there was like a proper DJ school back then I would have grabbed it. I mean I did actually go to um, a crew called DJ Academy mm-hmm. who did like traditional mixing mm-hmm. and that was that was really helpful and really fun. But in terms I of turntablism, yeah. there was kind of yeah like I mean I, yeah, there were a couple of like DVDs floating around, but a lot of it was like see it copy it. I mean I I even got like two copies of. The Ed Rush and Optical record that Craze used, and tr- and yeah, and just shit like that. Like that was that was the one hundred and one. Okay, what are they doing? And just kind of building from there. And then as I started entering the battles, there was definitely bits of like, you know, I could like commentate the clip and be like, oh, that juggle came mm. from from there. But as you go on, you know, you kind of find your own style and you find your own approach. I mean, the key thing, my my favorite routines, even from like my kind of earlier years were like there's there's an idea that i'm trying to hit to so like the f- i think the first the first routine that was really like okay i'm i'm aiming for something was billy squire big beat mm-hmm. and i was trying to flip that so drop that you know sample by dizzy dizzy rascal of course um so i had fun with that and then oh it goes into this rock bit okay i'll try and flip it into seven nation army by the white stripes and that needed a whole fucking level of technicality to get to that. So like, just like, yeah, like when the when you got the core idea you're driving through, that that's that's what really makes a routine. Like, you know, you start with like the basics, the technicality. A lot of a lot of the best DJs will share the same level of technicality. Really? Yeah. Do you have like yeah, there can of- be there can be a real that is actually qu- quite a level playing field. Really? Yeah. Well, people yeah. talk I think yeah. openly about ideas and how to help more more kind of more kind of like like in the world final when you're judging it like there's a lot of similarity like technically there might not be that much difference between Mm. almost everybody Mm. in the stage but it's really like yeah the ideas and how you're employing that and the the variety as well and just yeah just like that god this is good (laughs) this is fucking great (laughs) i feel like i'm getting an insight a further insight you um you say that, and I think there's a lot of that in in graffiti. Like a lot of people will turn around to people and say, "No, you're a piece of shit," but not from a point of view of 
you can't do it again or there is anything mm. constructive in it. It's more of like, do you like that, 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 And most definitely, definitely the case in beatboxing, there's a lot of that. Like, But does that flatline everything where, you know, the likes of my generation, it's all about battling. Yeah. It was all about yeah. competing and it's almost... DJing kind of the selector... You know, and we're going back all the way to the like early eighties with Cool Herc and Grandmaster Flash. They used to rip apart their their you know their their uh, titles on their their records that they're in the sleeves yeah, because they yeah. they didn't want people knowing what the dubs were. You know, yeah. And drum and bass is notorious for that. Like mm. back in the day, it was all about dub plates. Mm. Um, going back to the Sound Clash era, does that defeat the object? Doing it the way that you're speaking of, and people just getting on harmoniously. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question i mean like i mean there the, there doesn't tend to be i mean like like i was doing copycatting like i would never ever show a routine like live that was like although that's it i did do the ed rush craze record thing i did do that at a heat mm -hmm. but that was when i was i was 13 yeah yeah when I did that. Kids, so, right you know right? you know yeah. uh, i think that's, a, that's more of an exercise of uh uh complimentary showing that you have you know done the your history. education. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I've forgotten the question. <laughs> uh, yeah, the level playing field. The fact that is there is yeah, there room to chance. battle anymore? Is it or is it just you know pat each other on the back and? Well, there's there's never really been that much kind of real anger in in battling. It's always been quite friendly. I think mm. in in the US it's maybe been a bit different. There's some real ego clashing. But generally, like at the world final, everyone is super friendly. Like if you diss someone in a battle afterwards, they go, that diss you used against me was wicked. Mm. You know, it's really friendly vibes. And no one um, wants aggressive. Ugly, no, exactly. Yeah, it's all, kind of all, the sh all the aggressive is on, is on show. And yeah. then you come off and it's so much fun. And everyone gets pissed at the after party. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we know those after parties very well, Switch. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's a, again, it's a good question. Like... I don't know, yeah, like, it's because that's kind of almost pre my era, like, the kind of, where you don't actively try and share the skills, but, because it's weird for me, because I've been so involved in teaching throughout all my DJ kind of career, where you're you're actively sharing the ideas mm. and trying to bring people into our world, so, like, yeah, um, it's... I don't know. I, 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 I'd, I'd like to go away and research it because, like, I'm I'm interested to see what other people's vibes on it are. Like, how much how much do you share? Because because yeah, because there is the fine line of yeah, you've got the buying kind of aspects when like yeah yeah. So I my, my my brain is popping off. I think the buying the principle is something that yeah, it's all about. Progression, respect. Respect comes in the form of just allowing people to be their best creative them. I mean, I don't really have a... Mm. I'm, I'm very vanilla at these these conversations. So I don't actually have an opinion on it. But one thing that I do, I do understand is if everyone's closely guarding their shit, then how the fuck are you supposed to do anything? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it dies pretty, you know, yeah. we, we wouldn't be here 50 years, we wouldn't be exactly. part of it. Yeah, you know? exactly. Although there are some kids like, like through me, like the level of shit he's doing makes me like, you're, you're going to have to sit there and lecture me for two hours on how to do what he's doing because you've got like, you've got effects to chuck in the mix as well. And that's what's kind of, what's interesting about turntablism now is... It's kind of the added extras because mm. I think, like we've kind of we I, I feel like we have hit like the peak of like in terms of the pure turntable. We, we I feel like we've almost innovated everything we could on just that pure setup. How do you figure that? Partly from not seeing anything like super new, mm -hmm. like um, like I remember doing a session with JFB and we were trying to work out new body tricks, like how do because you, you've got like the classics like. Like like yeah, what radio you got your under leg behind yeah. the back, yeah, using your back. Um, we did find one which again was quite complicated. Mm -mm -mm. It was so like <laughs> what was it? So it was here we go. So it was forearm on the crossfader. Right, so the forearm on the crossfader, right? Hand on one record. Yeah, and then 
your other hand is on turntable two, so you can kind of do that. Which right. looks which looks doper than this does. Yeah, yeah. But that was the one we kind of came up with. And I think even that, I'm sure I even watched the Rock Raider video and he'd and be done, done it in ninety six. It's just <laughs> like oh. Okay. Maybe maybe the sources for new ideas comes in the form of other you know, uh art, artistic uh, uh, genres. Yeah, totally. When also and also because because the technology is like still evolving, so like all the DJ mixes now generally have the same kind of they have like, you know, if you've got your like, Serati you've all got your cue points mm. and your different effects like loops and rolls. So that's kind of that's a hundred percent been added on now as mm. like, okay, here's this, what can you do with that? So it is that has kind of risen it up a layer because it gives you more things to do as well. Yeah. So you're juggling and you're trying to find things to trigger. So that's that's what kind of keeps it interesting. Like and also because it's generally the same across the DJ equipment, every, like that's all kind of leveled up. So it's not like, oh, that mixer can do something, my mixer can't. Which I remember was like, that was an early conversation when Serato was coming in. Like, what if, yeah, my equipment can't do what yours does. But at mm. least at least the le- the le- that's kind of become a playing field because every, every DJ company has built that kind of stuff in. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's a bit like what social media does, you know. Like all of a sudden, there's shorts for YouTube. And yeah, exactly. Stories. For yeah, Instagram. just d- everybody's doing it. Yeah. Yeah, and also that does cut the amount of time for these poor sound engineers when doing competitions to be like having to replace big bits yeah. of gear because everyone's got their own preferences. Yeah, they? exactly. Yeah, it's fucking hard work, isn't it? it is. <laughs> so for, honestly, I feel sorry for them. Like when you're going in battles and you just see tables and tables, the whole the whole stage looks like a, a, you know the back back. Back room of Radio Shack. You yeah. know. And it's normally just Pete. It's just Pete at DMC. Oh, yeah, big up Pete. Single handedly swaps thinking, every mixer. I wasn't thinking and just of goes, Pete, but big up Pete. Yeah. He just, <laughs> Pete, Pete just looks continually like <laughs> under pressure. Yeah. Look, it doesn't, I don't want to be here. Big up Pete. <laughs> big up Pete. Big up all the DMC, man. I mean, these are my family, man. Fucking yeah. decades of hosting. There, there we go. Boom, boom, boom. As he's worn on the jacket. Yeah. How far does tech. Right. Actually, I did have a bit of a footnote of what i was going to come to here because ai is a really Mm. new for whenever you're listening to this it is new (laughs) it was (laughs) it was really new revolutionary you type in anything on on the computer and it comes back at you with a ready formed you don't need to this is a job because Mm. i've the the technology's there and has got your ass on a plate but actually what it suggests is uh AI technology, it works in the present tense <coughs> and the past tense really well. It can sum up your life in a second. But what it can't do is run 10 miles ahead and fucking come up with something that is just unthinkable. Mm. And I think for turntablism, bringing it back to the subject matter, I've always felt like you guys are on the cutting edge a future for and mm. as a result of which you've got these mixes and t- that have got so many different yeah things i get your understanding of why fucking hell, like we've gone to the past present and the future yeah here. yeah well, where do we go what can we do but you do have this luxury now of like uncountable options yeah. and creative yeah yeah ways to explore yeah i mean i guess yeah i, I do feel about when i say like when I say like turntablism's like, I don't mean it's like plateaued or anything, just like in terms of just the raw kind of, if you've got two turntables and a mixer, what else do you do that hasn't been done already? Like maybe that's a bit harder because you've got so many DJs like in the real thick of battling, like, you know, 95s, 2000s, everyone was like, what shit can I do to beat that guy? And that was really driving it. And because you've now got these extra features like yeah that's 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 the kind of next impetus like how can i do more stuff like like at the moment like my equipment at the moment i'm really enjoying digging in mm. and finding shit that it will do that other mixes can't do mm. and just kind of being like but but still kind of i'll always try and use it in a kind of showcase kind of way so like so you know, you now got like synthesizers in the, the mixer so all of a sudden you've got a baseline coming out of like 
Mad. Yeah, we've got a record on. Yeah, and just shit mad. like that. Mad, yeah. mad. Birdie Nam Nam. And the character mm. likes of these, these crews. Um, C, well, they can see. C2C. Uh, C2C. Yeah. I mean, bad here. Just listen mm. to me. Just crazy levels of different varieties of mixes and setups that mm. allow them to almost take their own role as yeah. instrumentalists yeah. within a collective DJ yeah. crew. Um, what was I coming to? Right, so. A uh, rock guitarist or any guitarist, electric, will always refer back to his acoustic. For my money, when all said and done, you know, sure, 58 microphone all day mm. with a lead. <laughs> <laughs> with a lead. Um, what's to say that you don't go back to just 12 tens rain mixer and work within the restrictions mm. again? Um, sh- could that... Is that has that ever explored nowadays? Do you know what? It's an when when DMC allowed Serato into the battle, which was two thousand eight, I think if I'm right, two thousand eight or nine, and it wasn't. They were very clear about the whole thing of like, we're not saying you have to use it; you have the option to. The year before that every DJ was using pressings. They were pressing their own records to enter the battle. It's cool as shit. And then as soon as they say Serato's in, every DJ bar one was on it, which I I think said quite a lot. But I think that's also kind of... What did that say to you? I think it kind of said... Do you know what? I think it's kind of the way they wanted to push it because it kind of said, okay, if I'm using normal vinyl, I'm, I'm a little bit trapped in how quickly I can change the track. If I go down the Serato route, I can do more things. And like I could use my own beats. I could use my mate's beats. I can mm. I can make more things happen quicker. Mm. And you 100% do lose stuff. Like you can lose, like if you've got your vinyl set, you, you have to work out how you keep it interesting. So I've done my routine with LL Cool J. Now I have to get to Dre. And I have to play the record, keep that interesting. How do I put the Dre track mm-hmm. on? You know, that kind of thing. When you fast forward to like Serato, you can pre-edit everything. Transitions out the window, mate. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. so you, you you 100% do lose stuff. And it also kind of means you don't have to think as much about your transitions, your whole set. So that 100% had a massive impact. I mean, I would love it to go back to like, the kind of vinyl format you do still have the pure vinyl mm. category now but yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> youngins, uh, youngins yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um right so on a completely different subject you've got your gear it's set up it's ready to go what is the last five minutes through through the mind and eyes of mr switch when he's about to take center stage What's going through your What's going through your head? In a battle? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, the last five minutes before I won this jacket were, um, yeah, uh, in twenty fourteen, I had to take myself off to a dark room, mm. breathe deeply, mm. and that was that was a kind of I know I've won this title. I've done my work. I know I've got it. So it was just real, just controlling the nerves. How do you and control the nerves? Because we're talking about needle drops and all sorts of stuff. You know, yeah. it takes a steady hand. How do you control that? Does the missus have to be like 100 yards away from you or she <laughs> just, you know, bite someone's head off? Is it, how do you control these anxieties? It can, it can change a lot. I mean, once, once you're kind of on stage, for me, like the adrenaline kind of kicks in a bit more. You've got the crowd there. And because 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 the world final's been in London, you got home turf, you have got the crowd are behind you. So, yeah, and also because you're performing such a precisely plotted routine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it can be dra- It can be so draining. Yeah. Like you, you, like for me, I just kind of want it to start and just like get on the the journey. I'm like that with most DJ sets. I just want to start and go and be active and jump into it. You're an extremely like, positive guy. Yeah. I can imagine you're quite like that with everything you do. Just let's yeah. just get on it, get on with it. Yeah. Is yeah. that is that a, a mantra that you kind of hold close? I'm very logistics smashing at the moment. Yeah. Really, <laughs> smashing logistics. Yeah. Yeah. Really. That's the boring shit. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And you teach for a living? Um, 
I, I have done a bit of teaching. I'm kind of, at the moment, my time is kind of taken up between, um, so I'm DJing for a rap crew, Too Many Tees. Oh, big up Too Many Tees. Come on, son. So, yeah, so tour schedule for this year to be announced. Ton of festivals. Man, I bet that's a show. I it's bet fun. It's a fucking show. It's fun. It's so much fun. Like, yeah, I, I've, I've known the boys for ages and it's, yeah. we. Yeah, have, they seem like really decent, decent yeah. lads. Yeah. And, and also, like, I, th- I I love the fact they're really happy. Like, if they want to throw a curveball, I will. I'm I'm ready for it. You know, mm-hmm. um, like some of the ideas I've got for this year. Yeah, I just can't wait. Oh <laughs> shit! Really? Yeah, yeah. There's there's an idea. I need to buy some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to give it away. I will. Uh, <laughs> when it happens, it. I'll send the clip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah right? So so yeah. So half my time is going to be between the T's and my my orchestra crew, um, Symphonica. Wow, and we're doing a we're doing a, a kind of Ibiza club classics kind of tour at the moment, and we're doing history drum and bass, which is my absolute favourite thing in the world. We've got a sixteen piece orchestra playing Origin Unknown, Ray Keith, High Contrast. It's so much fun. Yeah, not today, mate. Not today. It's too. <laughs> it's too. It's too early in the week. Too early in the weekend. Wow, that's mad. Yeah. That's mad. It's a lot of fun. And we're actually, yeah, so so we started the orchestra, it's going to be eight years ago this year. So we did a, we did our first show at Boomtown, and I don't even know how it... Talk to me about came, it. So is it you with how many uh, strings? So, so now we've kind of got it down to, um, it can be between 16 and 22 piece orchestra depending on the show and you arrange this as a tour manager so there's me and uh the conductor composer miles miles hancock my boy big up miles all the time. and uh yeah so yeah so we'd done some shit together we met in nottingham we but like i went to uni there and he was on the music scene and yeah the idea for like an orchestra came together and he just knew people and was up for it so we so for the first show we just kind of threw a track list together got the crew together, did a show at Boomtown, and then, yeah, fast forward, we've done like, yeah, done eight years of Eight shows years? Together. Yeah, eight years. Dude. <laughs> and and now you're saying you've, do, you've reapplied the same, you've reimagined it for drum and bass? Yeah, so, yeah, so we've got a two-hour show. Um, so, yeah, so we did, so we first did that in 2021. Um, where have we got shows this year? So we've got Bristol, Manchester, and... We should have London in October this year. So, yeah. Innovation. It is. And also, again, like, with that show, I never wanted it to be, like, press play, do nothing. So, like, so I'm I'm triggering. I'm giving myself way too much to do in the show. But, yeah, I'm triggering everything. So, went back to, like, yeah, so reprogrammed all the beats. So, but it's, it's, like, it's, it's like digital remastering or, like, analog remastering. Like, you take those tracks... Ev- all like everything is played live. Like you've got double bass doing like all the ninety five, yeah. ninety four kind of bass lines. Yeah. Like and you forget where you are. You're just in absolute heaven. I yeah. can imagine. Yeah, I mean, I have so much shit to do that <laughs> I'm just like I am concentrating for the whole two hour show. But yeah, do you think? Um, do you think in 2023 with um, my words and everybody else's the oversaturation of you know hype based performances, a la maybe it's like mumble rap of its age and and even nowadays you know there's more compares than there are actual mm. artists singing their songs and performing do you think there is this widening gap in the market for that people that they want to invest more of their time watching things that actually they that that mm. that, 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 that are, is a performance yeah i i think so there right? definitely there definitely is a hunger for it like yeah because Oh, there's just it's 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 really strange yeah because i i'm like the whole kind of mumble rap scene i'm i'm interested in it and i want to get to know it, but I can, I can never do you know i can never quite get to grips with it i just can't i can't get on board with it you know so yeah um so you think you you think there'll always be a place for the turntables and definitely yeah Yeah. because it's still like if you've never seen it before there's still you know there's always going to be someone who's never seen it before and just goes you know yeah that always blows my mind that it's never it it doesn't get it's still it still feels yeah that's kind of 
which is good and bad. Overall, it's probably bad because, like, yeah. I mean, you've got so many, like, the age range of, like, kids coming into it at the moment, like, 11-year-olds and 13-year-olds is kind of crazy. But, like... Really? you seeing that? Yeah, 100%. Fantastic. Like, like there are some... It's it's mind-blowing. Like, like the Goldie Awards, mm. they've had, like, an under-18 competitor in the final each year. Like, 13-year-old, 11-year-old, like, DJ Michelle. Like, K-Swizz has just mm-hmm. won the world title and... Is he is he eighteen? He's probably he's probably not eighteen yet. Mm-hmm. So you know, there's so many kids coming through, which is which is amazing. Um, but yeah, but at the same time, it's kind of yeah, I, I do kind of feel like there's a missing generation almost. Like, and I think it's why it's it's still a surprise to most people. It's not it's it's lost a bit of currentness. It's kind of it's gone underground, which it always does. To you know, kind of recalibrate. Improve, recalibrate. But yeah, do you think? Yeah, do you think a lot of that head. is social media driven? Is that that you know, you know the the, the heroes of the day? Mm. You know, you don't ever ever dis- discover them on VHS. <laughs> <laughs> but and then yeah. then social media, and this is is an old head saying it, but um, uh, I don't mean it in that context. It's more if you if you if you separate the fault lines of why you would do something to why a younger TikTok yeah. fan would do it. It's a far cry from, you know, yeah. your, your rock yeah, craters yeah. and your Mr. Sinisters of the world, isn't it? That's... Yeah. I think there's still, like, at that age, there's still always going to be, like, you're still finding your feet. Yeah. Like, if I think back to when I found my feet in terms of, like, my style, like, it was after my first world title. Yeah. Definitely. I That's still had so dope. I, I was, in, like, there's a couple of routines where I'd only just got, like, that. That's mm. That's the right direction, you know. It can take a long time. Like, I don't know... And there's no shortcut for it as well. Mm. I think a lot of it kind of comes from, yeah, I think finding your own style is the most difficult thing. It's so easy to, like, like, like just in my mind, I've just got, like, DJs who will literally copy their idols, wear the same mm. things, mm. and and just, like, where's the, you know, it's it's shallow and hollow. Mm-hmm. So finding that drive is it that's the mission i think yeah yeah and they've become the guys that are you know the ones that find those unique you know, i guess right place right time you know hand of the gods <laughs> and then in comes you know cuba you know yeah. mix master mike oh my god like when mm. we talk about style mix master mike but then they you know like you say there's there's there are competitors that I guess are younger that could could rival that because that's the yeah. way the DJ world works, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But it's interesting when when they find their style, like, yeah, they still have like you can you can win a world title and you still haven't found your style, which is yeah. kind of crazy. And that that was me back in like two thousand eight, just about. Yeah. It's fast tracking, isn't it? Yeah, getting to that point quicker. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's been a fucking pleasure having you on, bro. <laughs> on that note. You've told us the future, and it's fucking bright, yeah. brighter than these lights. Fantastic! Thanks so much for passing through, my Dude, bro. Thank you so much. It's been good. <laughs> it's been fucking awesome. <laughs> wow, that flew. Oh, Killer Keller Jesus. podcast. Yeah, it is. It's it fucking flying. Yeah, Killer Keller podcast. Oh. Alan was out of fashion. Serves you all fucking right. Sharing is caring. All right, so tell a friend to tell a friend. Yeah. This is not spectator sport. This is sport and art. So get on the decks. Get on the, the influence that make you successful, prosperous, and creative, all right? Uh, crime don't pay. Neither did they. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Stay lucky, people. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Jesus.